Hello everybody, welcome to a figure tutorial video on map knowledge. That's right, we're going to do a tutorial on maps. Map knowledge is very important in all games, especially in figure. That's why I want to make a tutorial series for new players, so they can get some information on maps, learn how the spawn points work, learn where the loot is, where all the points of interest are, and just give them a general idea of how the maps work in Vigor because a lot of the maps have a very special dynamic to them. So with that said, I'm starting the series off with Fisk. Fisk is a big map with a big lobby of 10 to 12 players. But in reality, the playing field of Fisk is very small and it's a very aggressive map. The map is really designed to have maximum conflict and for new players this is actually not the best map to start learning vigor on you'll understand this how it works by the end of the video so definitely stay tuned and uh, let's get into our first image here so i made a little overview of all the points of interest on the map where bard and container and time spawned and what you will notice probably is that a lot spawns on the right side of the map Everything is located into the little fisherman village to the north northeast. There's a couple that uh, have the option to spawn on the left side between the western settlement and the endless lookout and lost patrol somewhere in the mountain range. But by the end of the video you'll understand what the point of these are. Just keep a mental note that everything spawns north to northeast of the map. So here I have an overview of where the loot is on the map. I apologize for the level of graphic design on these images. I made them in paint, it's the best I could do. Sorry. But I think you get the point. The green area on the east side is where all the loot is. Um, you don't really have to look hard for it. Every building will have loot. You can just go from building to building and get a lot of loot. The blue area at the boss office, that's where all the chemicals are. Before the update, they would put chemicals everywhere in the green area as well, but they took them out and they concentrated them into that one building. So if you want chemicals, you go to the boss office, loot all the lockers in the big building. It's a pretty big building, you can actually get lost into it, but that's where all the chemicals are. Next two areas, Western Settlement, Tunnel Blockade, they have loot, but they are not worth your time. Western Settlement has so little loot, it's just there to slow you down. Um, you'll exit with like, what, two fuel, 10 glass, 10 nails. Definitely not worth your effort to go there if you don't spawn there. And if you do spawn there, I would not waste my time looting the area unless Bard is also there. Tunnel Blockade. Uh, same deal, it has cars, you can loot the cars, cars set off alarms, alarms are bad. You're inside a tunnel, there's only two ways you can come out. If you set off an alarm, people will know where you are, they will just camp the exit until you come out and you're, you're an easy kill for them. Even if uh, timed save spawns there, I don't go for timed because hitting the switches lets everybody know where you are as well. So. I think it's also clear that the entire mountain part of this map has nothing. So maybe you'll start to see a pattern here. Um, everything is actually on the north and northeast side of the map. Points of interest spawn there, uh, the loot spawns there, and you're kind of just pushed into that area. And that's what I meant with this is an aggressive map because it's a big lobby and it's supposed to be a bit big map, but it's actually a very small area where you will be playing. The resources that you will find most on this map are glass, chemicals, and fertilizer. So these are really the, those resources you will be looking for the most, especially early game when you're upgrading your shelter. So this is a very good map to collect these resources, but it's an incredibly aggressive map to play on. All right, so here we have an overview of the potential spawn points. These are not all the spawn points on the map. I'm pretty sure I missed a couple, but this will give you a general idea of where you can spawn and how close other people will spawn to you. 
Um, if you look at the west side, um, like, like we discussed already, there is no loot there. So if you spawn on the west side or even the south side in the hills, then you have nothing to go to. If you spawn on the east side, you're in the middle of where all the loot and points of interest are. And that's where the dynamics of this map comes into play. People who spawn on the east side, they are the first respawn, the first wave into the game. They get access to the loot, they get access to points of interest, and they get into the first big fights. Once those are done, that's around minute four or five of the game, maybe earlier, that's when all the players from the west side of the map will have crossed over the mountains and they come into the playing field. And they are the second wave of players, or the second respawn. I like to call it a delayed respawn. So those then show up with full ammo, full consumables, and they got nothing to lose. You're sitting there, you already used your ammo, you used your consumables. Your backpack's full of loot and you don't want to lose the loot. You can't exit right away because the exits, that's a whole different topic here. So you have to fight those new players that just made it across the map. And that's why this map is so aggressive. If you spawn on the east side, you spawn right into the action. If you spawn on the west side, you have to make your way towards the action, but you have to kill the other players because they already took all the loot. If you don't kill them, you leave with nothing. So in this map is maximum conflict at all times. Early game, you're in a conflict. Mid game, you're gonna be in a conflict. Late game, exit, you are going to be in a conflict if you're not careful. I'll explain that in the next part of the video. So let's have a quick talk about the spawn points. If you spawn Western Settlement or uh, South Side of the Hills, you can always just exit and get into, into a new game, or you choose to quickly cross the map and make your way North and East. If you spawn east side, be ready to get into a fight very quickly. If you spawn on the little island on the old storage junk, that's uh, one of the worst spawns as well because you're bottlenecked into that area and other players have a direct view of you from Cafe Lise or the store market. Um, so be careful if you spawn there. Most of the other spawns on the east side are pretty good. You always got cover, but you are always close to another player as well. Next thing we're going to talk about is signals. So signals only has uh, four spawning spots on this map. Three of them have a significant meaning, while the other one is actually a bit useless. Uh, the one that's useless is the one at endless lookout. It's just another mechanic to slow you down. If you use signals on that location, there's not really any useful information you will get from it because most players are on the east side of the map and by the time you get from signals to the east side of the map everybody will have moved to a different location already. Um, the ones at Lonely Johansson, the two, they are a bit prone for exit camping. Exit camping is already a problem on this map but if signals spawns on the southeast exit then you can be sure there's going to be an exit camper nearby as well. The one to the left of it, um, that's a bit more neutral. It's a bit further from the playing field. So people will use it, but if you're not the one using it, it's not that big of a problem unless you are in that direct area. So the last spawn is on top of the hill at the north area, and that's an important hill. Even if signal doesn't spawn there, that hill is always going to be a power point on this map. If there's somebody on that hill, they can see very far, they can hear a lot, and they have a good cover and good advantage point for taking you out. So if signals is there, you definitely want to control that area. If you don't control that area, that's okay. Just be mindful that if somebody hits signals, they can be on top of you in 30 seconds or less. But the advantage is, if they use signals, you also know where they are. I would not recommend pushing too hard on signals after it's been used, because they will know you're coming and they have the high ground and they are at a big advantage on that hill. Um, that's all we're gonna say about signals. Uh, just gotta remember, endless lookout is useless. 
The one on the hill is the most important. The two to the south, a bit neutral to the gameplay. Okay, so last part of this video is about the exits. And maybe you're thinking exits are pretty straightforward. You just go to one and you leave the game. But it's not that simple. Even exits have a design behind them. And on Fisk, it is again designed for conflict. The exits are very far apart, which means that if you go to one exit and there's an exit camper maybe, then you have to either fight that exit camper or you have to go to another one. But if you start going to an exit too late and radiation's already crossing the map, you may not get to another exit in time because they are very far apart. Even the one at the western settlement and the one in the hills, they are the closest and even those are hard to get from one to another in time. Out of the four exits, one of them is closed, the one up north. It takes five fuel to unlock them. And getting fuel was impossible on this map before season 12. Now you can get fuels by looting cars. Again, looting cars is a risk. You may set off an alarm. People will know where you are. So this is a risk versus reward system to get an easy exit. But this could lead to another conflict because you need that fuel to exit. If somebody else unlocks it, that's good. Uh, if an exit gets unlocked, it's unlocked for everybody. But don't count on that. So the other two exits I marked with a red arrow are the west and southeast one. These are very prone to, for exit campers. Exit campers really like these exits because they're easy to hide uh, behind containers or cars or trees. And they know that you can't get to another exit in time if you come too late. So be careful when you go to these exits. And if you hear crows, always know if you're going up against an exit camper, you're at a disadvantage because they already see you before the crows hit. They already know your position and you don't know their position. And that's a dangerous position to be in. So my suggestion is always leave early. If you're not going for the airdrop on this map, then leave when the airdrop comes. You know, once the announcement comes and you hear the plane flying over, wrap up what you're doing and start moving towards an exit. Because this is a big map. And besides the locked exit, all the three exits are very far from the playing field. So you're gonna need that time to cross across over the hills in a safe way and not get killed on your way out. Now the last exit is the one in the hills. I also marked that with a blue arrow because in my opinion it's one of the safest exits. It is also the furthest exit from the playing field. You really need to go into the hills, go over the hills, go over the rocks, expose yourself. Um, it's, it's not an easy one to get to. It takes time but it is less likely to be camped because it's open it's pretty open and even if it's camped it's easier for you to get around the camper and into the exit which is not possible on the other two ones because you have to go between a, a car and a container to get into the exit i also put a yellow star near that exit um, if you were heading to that exit put a marker on that spot and follow that Otherwise, if you put your marker uh, closer to the exit icon, you're going to lose yourself in the hills and you're gonna walk up against uh, rocks that you can't climb and you're gonna lose a lot of precious time and a lot of precious stamina trying to get around it. So just put a marker on that spot. Uh, don't go straight to it. Always follow uh, cover, stay in cover on, and don't go in the open in those mountains. And you should be able to reach your exit safely. So to recap a bit, exiting on this map takes planning. You either plan to take the short exit, but then you need fuel, or you need to take one of the other three. If you take one of the other three, leave in time so that you can head to another exit in case there's an exit camper. And with that, we are going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. If you have questions about Fisk, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have comments or remarks about the video that you agree or disagree on, feel free to post those too. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on this map lately, 
as you can see in my uh, game of the day videos i've spent many many games here trying to collect as much information about it as i can don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one i have the next video ready to be uploaded very soon and i hope to see you guys in the next video bye